What is up guys, pk 49 here, welcome back to Being Around the World, the series where I tour Xbox One maps that you might not be familiar with. Today we are returning to Beanberg, the community server that I worked on for two whole years. If you guys didn't see the last Beanberg episode, I encourage you guys to go click the link in the card and go check it out. Because we're going to pick up right where we left off. We stopped at the center of town, the main square. And we talked a little bit about this. Now I want to go tour a little bit more of the downtown area for you guys. Our first stop today is basically City Hall. It's a, it's a humble City Hall. I uh, want to remind you guys that this is a community server. It's 100% in survival, 100% legit. I'm going to take this off so we can get a better view. Yes, everything you see here was mined and, uh, you know, found. No duping, no creative mode. Place metallic items in chests. Alright, that is the metal detector. You do not want to go to City Hall with any weapons in your person. Alright, so what we're going to go is to the law and the courtroom. So what I want to show you guys here is the thing I show every newcomer to the city. Once they pass the trials, we come down here. These are the laws of Beanberg. Here we go. Laws of Beanberg. All citizens are afforded due processes during the right including the right to a fair and expedient trial. That's right guys, there are laws that every citizen must follow. Let's go through the laws one by one. To give you a sense of what we're doing here in Bieber, murder for any reason is punishable by incarceration, death, and or banishment from the world. That's right, if you killed somebody, you went to trial. More about trial in a moment. Law two, theft from persons or from chests is punishable by incarceration, death, and or banishment from the world. That's right, if you stole someone's chest, you go to trial. Law 3. Altering the city of Beanberg in any way without permission is punishable by incarceration, death, and or banishment from the world. That's right, if you mess with the city of Beanberg in any way without permission or without a permit, then you go to trial. Alright? Law 4. Constructing anywhere on the map without express permission is punishable, punishable by incarceration, death, and or banishment from the world. That means if you start building somewhere without the proper paperwork, without the proper licenses, then you go to trial. Alright, here we go. Law 5. Mining within city limits is punishable by incarceration, community service, and or death. If you mined in the city, then you go to trial. I wanted to mine the city myself. You know, you guys had the rest of the map to, to mine, so I wanted something to mine of my own. Law 6. Duping or generating blocks in any way is punishable by instant banishment from the world. This, you did not go to trial. If you got caught duping, you are just banned. No trial. That's it. <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe that might, might... No, that's not true. We did catch one guy and he had a trial. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> Law 7. Possession of any pets of any kind is punishable by blah, 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 blah. So that means if you had an animal without the proper paperwork, yes, you could buy paperwork to keep animals, then you went to trial. And the last law. Acquiring sand from anywhere besides the sand quarry is punishable by incarceration, community service, and or death. Guys, we used a lot of sand, okay? Uh, we basically stripped the entire sand biome of all its sand. And I'll probably show that to you. I don't think we're going get to get to it on today's video. This is the courtroom! It's got the colors of Beanberg. Yes, guys, we had trials. Basically, if you were caught breaking any of the laws, then we would gather everyone in the community together and we'd form a trial. Those who weren't involved would be the jurors, and they'd sit over here. Those who were involved would be the defendant or the prosecution. Uh, if you didn't want to represent yourself, you could hire a lawyer. Mr. Evoked was uh, one of the better lawyers in town, and he wasn't cheap, okay? But he did actually never got anyone off, okay? We didn't have too many trials. People were pretty, pretty good, but we did have to ban three, maybe four people from the world, if I remember correctly. This is where the judge stands, and I, I was the judge at all times. So yeah, we had a lot of fun. We had a few trials, and uh, it worked out pretty well. Unfortunately, we did have to ban a few people, but you know, that's how the story goes. A lot, everyone can follow the rules. I mean, they're pretty clear in black and white over here, so, you know, now everyone can follow the rules. We'll just take a quick tour through the city hall very, very quickly, just because, um, yeah, just some offices, some cubicles, nothing too fancy, nothing too fancy. All right, let's go check out more of the city. It's very dangerous too. Ow. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, this is one of the first buildings, one of the early buildings. Actually, let's see the first building. This is the first building I built in the city. It is the Forest Buffet Restaurant. This is the first building. Welcome to Forest Buffet. Please wait to be seated. This is the place to come get food. You know, I, like I said, food was kind of uh, donated a lot, so I would donate a lot of my food. And, you know, if I had any extra food, I'd put it in the buffet so people who are in the city could... Again, I can't... Okay, that one's empty. Oh, there we go. See, some of them are filled. People who are, you know, on the go and they needed food, they can just come to the buffet and grab a few pieces. Nothing too crazy. But, you know, it's not like you're going to, you know, survive off of this place. But if you're in a pinch and you need some a quick snack, you could come here and add some great seating as well. 
there was a nice view, but then this building got built here, this tower here. I'll explain what that tower is momentarily. All right, let's leave it. Leave the building. This is the forest buffet, the very first one. All right, over here, this is another subway system. This connects to the old subway that we saw in the previous episode. All right, and ooh, what's this? It's a statue. Boy, that guy sure does look familiar, doesn't he? Sure does. He's holding the Beanberg flag in his right hand. He's holding a torch in the, his left hand. Let's go up there, shall we? Yes, this is the, uh, a statue dedicated to our founder. Uh, no one knows too much about our founder, but he was a very intelligent, uh, good-looking, funny. Yeah, he was the best. I don't, you know, I can't say too much about our leader. Uh, he was just a, an amazing guy. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is the top of uh, my head. <laughs> Um, in the mo in the least, you know, in the least, um, what's the word? Narcissistic way. This is a, a, a tribute to myself. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's take a panoramic view of all this. Ooh, what do you guys think of that? That's another part of the city which we'll get to. I don't want to show you guys too much. Woo! We're coming down. So yes, this uh, leader is on top of the subway system. This is the downtown station. Like I said in the previous video, all you have to do is press the button and the track will realign and to take you to that new place. All right. We'll take one of those uh, rails at some point. Now, one thing about this city, guys. The reason people wanted to live here was because there was a lot of shops. The wool dispensary. We buy, sell, and trade wool. I know that one of my intentions with this map was to make it so people did not have to go scavenging for supplies. They did not have to go out into the world. All they had to do was come to the city. And basically what they would do is they'd tell me, uh, Bean, I want to do some wool. I want to buy some wool or trade some wool. And I'd come over here and I'd meet them. There's a secret entrance to the back of the shop. And I'd be in the back of the shop. All those things are filled with wool. And we'd make a trade. And uh, I had a price for wool. I don't remember what the price is now. But uh, it was pretty affordable. I wanted everyone to have wool because it was a... You know, something that I wanted everyone to have was color in their builds. So I sold wool for very cheap prices. This is a place for people to enchant in the city. You know, people had their own enchanting stations. But, you know, if you're quick in the city and you needed a quick enchantment, then you would come here. All right, this is the shoe shop. Yes, this is so much soul. Your one-stop shoe shop. So if somebody wanted to buy shoes, they would come here. And I sold feather-falling boots, basically. I don't want to show you how to get into the place, but uh, I would come here and I have all sorts of feather falling boots and we would buy or we would trade. I had set prices actually. So, you know, there's not, the barter system wasn't too popular in this city. I mean, not that it wasn't popular, but uh, I'll show you the bake and I'll show you why. Lando Cakes, everything you need to feed a sweet tooth. So this is like a cake shop, only this one wasn't a shop. Everyone was free to use it. I have all the supplies to make cakes back here, including... Our, our four foot brethren <laughs> right okay so this is a free place a lot of these are shops a lot of these are community places this is a community place for you to make cakes let's see we're gonna go through a bunch of shops here uh, this was a sand store that went out of service because frankly there was, there was a sand shortage in town a huge shortage this was one of my favorite stores this is the piggy piggly wiggly <laughs> this is where evoked would sell basically do you guys know about the the flying pigs achievement he made a device to help you get the achievement. He would charge people. Oh, I forgot how to get down there. Downstairs is a way to uh, get the achievement. It's a little machine. And he would charge people to help get the achievement of the when pigs fly. What's this? This is the coal burner, okay? This is uh, my store. This is the coal burner. Please leave five iron for every stack of coal you take. Let's see if I have any. Yeah, so if they wanted iron, they'd take a stack and they leave. I mean, if they wanted coal, they'd take a stack and leave five iron. And I'd come by and pick up the iron, and that was mine. And I made a profit. And iron was a very popular currency in the city. In fact, almost everything is going to be in iron currency. All right, let's see what else we got here. This is the Department of Animal Licensing. Like I said before, if you guys wanted an animal, you had to buy the license for it. So here we see the people who purchased animals. I believe it was 10 diamonds per animal. So these are the people who wanted farms or wanted pets of some kind. Most of these people were using their, their animals to make money. And by money, I mean iron. <laughs> buy animal license here. One diamond per animal, max 10. Okay, that's what it was. One diamond. So I would come, if they wanted an animal, they would come here and I'd, they'd tell me they were coming here and I'd meet them here and I'd give them the animal licensing. All right, this is a nice little park over here. Uh, actually, let's go to the bank before we go too far. I want to show you guys the bank because the bank is very important to the economy of this server. So let's go over there and uh, we'll take a look at it. I know I'm going to miss pass some, a bunch of things. This is the clothes shop. We won't go in there right now. This is, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. 
What's this? Oh, this is Lake Street Records. Remember I told you I had like 10 to 12 sets of records? Well, if people wanted to buy records, they'd come here. I only had one on display because I didn't want people stealing my records because they're really hard to get. So I have one of every record on display. If, I, if anyone bought one, I'd come by and replace it from my, uh, from my stash. Records are for sampling and store only. Contact Bean if you wish to purchase. There you go. All right, that's the record shop. Lake Street Records. Ooh, this is the newsstand. News, news, news. Let's read some of the news. What a difference a year makes. Take a look around Beanberg. All this in a year. BB's existence is a testament to the hard work of its many residents. With the coming celebration of her first B-Day, uh, BB will see many free to play tourneys, a new way to invest, an open house. So basically, if there was news on the server, uh, you could find it here. Okay, there's a lot of news about Beanberg's birthday, which brings us to the bank. This is the bank. Look at the gym. Ooh. <laughs> this is the bank over here. First National Bank and Trust. All right. Ooh, hey. Hey, hey now. All right, so this is the way the bank worked. First of all, there's two, two uh, functions for this bank. The first was to help set prices in the city. If you want it, these are the rates of today. <laughs> Today's rates. For, so for, this is the way the sign works. For one diamond, they could bring in any of these items and they'd get a diamond. So if they had one stack of iron, I'd give them a diamond. If they had one stack of gold, I'd give them a diamond. If they had 20 stacks of stone, I'd give them a diamond. And this was a way for people to make money. They could choose an item from the list and kind of focus on that. These rates change all the time depending on supply and demand. And I tried to stay on top of it. And there were only really suggestions. You know, throughout the city, people had their own rates for trading and bartering. And uh, these were just a suggestion. So people would go by the bank rate sometimes. Sometimes they'd go by their own rates. It was all very... Uh, very organic. And the other reason for this bank is I don't remember how it works. How does this work again? Oh, I've forgotten. There's all sorts of secrets around here, guys. All sorts of secrets. But uh, basically, there's a vault back there that Whiskrim helped me build. And people, you know, this is before Ender Chest. So if people wanted to, if people were afraid that their stuff might get stolen, they could keep it in the bank and I guarantee it's safety. So everyone has a chest. Oh, wait, here we go. I don't remember the code. I don't remember the code is a thing. Oh, see, there's a code here. You guys, if you guys have been following my channel, you'll know that uh, these are simple to make. I made a video on it the other day. But yeah, there's a vault back there with everyone's stuff. Very well done redstone by Whiskrum. He did a great job on the redstone in that. All right, let's go visit some more shops. Let's go visit some more shops because I feel like that's a thing to do. Now that you know how the economy sort of worked, there was a bank that was setting uh, suggestions for prices. People didn't have to follow it. A lot of people did the trade and barter system. Iron was a, an accepted currency. So was diamond. All right, let's go over here. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, this was a really fun one. Okay, this was the auction house. And basically, this was an auction house. What more do you need to know? We've got the American flag. We've got the flag of Beanberg. And uh, whenever someone was booted from the server, we had to redistribute their stuff. Or if someone uh, wanted to put up something for auction, we would come in here, we'd all meet in here, we'd put the auction thing in here, and we'd have two types. We'd have the silent auction and the open auction. The silent auction would be, you know, everyone looks in the chest, sees what's up for auction, then they put their silent bid in their own chest, and whoever had the highest bid would win the, 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 the auction item. Or we'd have an open auction, more traditional, like, you know, uh, going once, going twice, you know, I hear 12 diamonds, do I hear 13, stuff like that. So it was super fun. One of the more fun things we did in Beanberg was the auctioning. Uh, oh, this is a good one. This is the key. This is the key, guys. And I mean that's literally the key. Uh, spelled Quay, but that's how you spell key. Those who live in Florida might know what I'm talking about. So this was a theater. This is a theater. And you would buy your tickets here. And I wanted people to make money based on their creative talents, right? So if anyone wanted to host a show, they could do it in the key. They could charge tickets. I spent a lot of time building this. This is an extravagant uh, theater, okay? And um, we only had one performance by Lone Wonder, okay? We only had ever had one performance. And it, he bombed. He wanted to do some stand-up comedy. And it, uh, he ended up getting a lot of fruit thrown at him. <laughs> I mean, I guess he was nervous. But this is the theater. Uh, you know, it's meant for eight people, I guess. So this is the down seating, the downstairs seating. There's also the loge seating to beat tickets. You had to buy tickets. So, you know, if you wanted to do a... Ooh, what was that noise? If you wanted to do a, a show of any kind, a musical show or a comedy act or a play, you could do it here. Let me... Um, will I survive this? Do I have feather falling on? Oh, yes. But it doesn't work in the update, so let's not risk it. I want to show you how the curtain works. Well, the curtain's pretty obvious. You know how it works. That's gravel right there. You hit the button and the, the curtain falls when it's showtime. 
I don't know what the music's for. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I forget why I put music. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, I know how to get up there. I know how to get up there. Hold on. Give me a second, guys. This way. Yes. So whoever was in charge of the show would hit the curtain. I really like this curtain. I don't know why. It's so simple, but so effective. If we're, memory does not serve me well, guys. <laughs> memory is failing me. Come on, come on, come on. Get up, get up. Okay, so this is what you do. You hit this thing, and the curtain would fall, causing a major amount of lag, but also starting the show. And then up here is the... Yes, there you go. See, the curtain falls. All right, there we go. And then the show begins. Very cool. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Too bad we only had one performance. Good job, Lone, for having the bravery to do something, but he did bomb pretty hard. <laughs> pretty hard, guys. You've seen some comedians bomb before, I'm sure. Oh, it's raining. Well, there's nothing we can do about the Desolation server. I mean, Desolation. We're not in Desolation. The Beanbreak server because, you know, this is survival. This, guys, was my one of my favorite things to build. This is the BBSE, the Beanberg Stock Exchange. That's the noise we're hearing. Now I remember. This is the Beanberg Stock Exchange. The way this worked, as we walk in here, look at that. The way this worked was like the real stock exchange. I'm not going to read all that. I'll explain it to you as we go. You guys can pause that if you want to know. But basically, it was based off the real New York stock exchange. Basically, what you would do is you would look up some real-life company you wanted to invest in. Let's say you wanted to invest in Apple, and it was going for 80 a share. Okay? If you know how the real stock market works. Hey, what's this guy doing here? Uh-oh. I don't want to fight him. Not without my... Not without this, anyway. I don't know how he got it spawned up in here. Uh oh, don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't jerp. Oh, man. I haven't fought a mob in a while. I'm, like, nervous. Wow, this guy's just screwing... Okay, get out of here. Yeah, go. Go away. He's trying to invest in my properties. No, I do the investing around here. Anyway, so basically, let's say Apple was going for $80 a share in real life. You would put in 80 di uh, diamonds or 80 iron, whichever you wanted to do. And as the, the shares appreciated in real life, they'd appreciate on the server. So if you, if you invested in something and it went up in value, then uh, you can take out your money and make a profit. So this is the stock exchange. It never really took off, mainly because I think because most people don't know how a real stock exchange works. <laughs> okay, I'm an, I'm an adult, so I know how, to, how it works. But a lot of the players here were younger, and they don't know how a real stock exchange works. So... Actually, let me uh, go up there and get a, a, a scenic panoramic view without the thing. Because, yeah. So, yeah, people didn't know how the stock exchange worked very well. So, yeah, I thought it was a, a genius idea, personally. I really did. Okay, let's get out of here. What's next, guys? What's next? Let's go, let's go. i got to show as much as I can today without uh, going over the time. So, we're going to move. We saw this the other day. Very good, very good. All right, let's go over here some more. Yes. This is the newer part of the city. I'm going to show you now. We'll go up here now. And you can hear the stock market. You can hear it going. This is the post office. Oh, yeah. So this is a, a post office. What more can I say? If you wanted to leave a message or anything for somebody, or if you wanted to give them uh, some supplies, you could put it in their P.O. box. You know, when they weren't on the server. Not everybody's on the server at all times. And let's say you owe somebody something, you can just put it in their P.O. box rather than going to their office. This was the more centralized location. Yeah. Now, we're getting to the part of the city where people would buy real estate and let's go to the real estate office first so you'll understand it more. This is the real estate office, Department of Real Estate Licensing. So you couldn't build anything in the city without a license. You would come here and this is the information on how to buy uh, licenses and stuff like that. So I'll let you freeze it here but um, basically every type of plot was zoned and based on the zoning was depended on the cost. So you know, depending on the zoning, depended, you know what I mean, right? There was residential zoning, there was commercial zoning. If you wanted a store or a casino or something, you would come here, you would give me the diamonds, which I would put back into the bank, of course, so that the diamonds would be given to people who brought in items for exchanges. It worked, guys, it worked. I'm telling you, it worked. It was a, a big circle. The money went in circles. So this is uh, just showing you what everyone has, what everyone's purchased. So th this way, I have a record of what everyone owns. If you ever got tired of uh, whatever you bought, you could always sell it to someone else and we do the, the, the paperwork down here. So yeah, this is a record of what everyone owns. Alright, so we're getting to the part of the city where people had shops. Now, you know, a lot of people lived in the city, even people who didn't live in the city, they wanted to sell stuff. Right, so they, we had different shops. This is Dub's Lumber Mill, so you could get wood here. Right? This is 
What is this? This is a loan shop? I don't know what loan was selling in here. It changed every day, okay? He, he never he never really um, got to, a hold of that. This is Lokster's insurance shop? Lokster's money lending, yes. You could, uh, <laughs> you could Lokster would le loan you guys money if you wanted. Of course, if you didn't pay him back, there were severe uh, consequences. Let's see if we can find those. Uh-huh, hidden stairs. Good job, Lokster. Yeah, if you didn't pay up, uh, you had to come down here. Oh, yeah. Don't cross Lokster, guys. Uh, he had the interest running, okay, if you know what I mean. The interest was going for Lokster, so... Yeah, you didn't wanna you didn't wanna not pay him back. It was worse than kneecaps breaking. Oh the meat and bun! This is one of my favorites. This was Road 979 and Kayla. They came together to form a a company which was the meat and bun where they stole, sold steak for iron and bread. This was a great place to get food for the cheap. What else we got? What else we got? This is an Apple store. Not the the technology kind, but the apples kind. The dubs kind. So he was selling apples. Six iron for every sixteen juicy apples. Ah, not a bad deal, I guess. Over here we had the dirt shop, legal grass. I guess if anyone wanted to buy dirt, although I didn't understand why anyone would, uh, because there was free dirt on the other side of town. I guess if you didn't feel like walking all the way over there, you didn't have to. This one never got finished. This is my store. This is the tannery where you could buy leather. Of course, got six iron for sixteen leather. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hello, sheep. What are you doing here? It's, that's the black sheep of the city. <laughs> this is the slime shop. The slime chunk is what it was called. This is my shop. If you wanted to buy slime, it was one iron each. Okay, one iron per slime, right? Better than finding a slime chunk, let me tell you that. You could spend 12 hours finding a slime chunk or you could just come to the city and buy some. 16 spider eyes for 16 iron. This guy is trying to stay out of the rain. I don't blame you, man. It's cold out there. I'm not going to look at him. I don't want to look at him. He's ugly. Okay, so this is, uh, this is part of the city where people, you know, they, uh, they did their thing. Okay, let's go over here. There's, there's some more shops over here. This one was... Lokster's Iron Bank, where he was exchanging diamonds and iron. Basically, you'd convert your iron into gold or diamonds or whatever you wanted to do. Yes, Lokster was uh, uh, involved with money. This one is a, I believe this is a weapon shop or an iron? No, Bones and Arrows, that's what it was. Yes, Bones and Arrows. Alright, I forget who, that was Crimson Wing, actually. Oh, look at the city, it's beautiful in the rain, right? Right? Pretty cool. Alright, let's see over here. Um, ooh, this is the Av. This never really took off. This is around the time that we uh, stopped the server. But my intention for this was to have a Las Vegas style, like the strip, but the F. You, you get my drift, right? So this never took off. Wiscom was the only one who got to start his casino because, you know, we had to stop playing. But uh, there's another station over here. All these stations are connected. Should we take a station? No, not yet, not yet. There's more to see in the city. So we're not going to take that station just yet. Oh, I know where to go, guys. Let me check the time on this video. Oh man, time is up. So it looks like we're going to finish the rest of this video next week. Oh man, I wish I could show you more, but uh, you know, time just doesn't allow it. So what can you do? Oh man, where are we here? Oh man, I want to show you everything, guys. I want to show you everything, but there's just no time. Okay, we will return to this part of the, the city for next week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, leave a like if you did. This is Beanburn, guys. We've got some more coming next week, so stay tuned. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Happy Minecrafting. Peace.